Oh, nice. You've probably seen gymnasts, weightlifters, or basketball players apply chalk to their hands before an event starts. But it's not the same substance used to write on blackboards, which is usually calcium sulfate. So what material are athletes chalking up with? Like blackboard chalk, magnesium carbonate occurs naturally in minerals that are mined. But chemists can also synthesize it at industrial scales, for example, by exposing a slurry of magnesium hydroxide to pressurized carbon dioxide. I'm Matt Davenport, a reporter with the Science, Technology, and Education Group at Chemical and Engineering News, the news magazine of the American Chemical Society, offering global and comprehensive coverage of the chemistry enterprise. I'm also a co-host of Speaking of Chemistry, which is CNEN's video series that keeps you up to date with the important and fascinating chemistry shaping the world around you. During the next hour, we will feature the widespread impact chemistry has had on competitive sports at all levels, answering questions like, how are smart materials enabling athletes to compete better than ever before? What materials have chemists created to make sports safer? And how is analytical chemistry detecting performance-enhancing substances to keep the playing field level for everyone? We have a packed night ahead of us, so let's get the first period underway. But before we start, let's play a little chemistry sports trivia. Now, American football is not the only sport that cares about proper inflation. Tire pressure is critically important in NASCAR races. Which gas does NASCAR trust in its tires and why? Nitrogen. Compressed nitrogen contains less moisture than normal compressed air. That moisture can vaporize as tires heat up during the race, which increases the air pressure inside a tire. Nitrogen, therefore, is more stable at higher temperatures. Welcome back. You can't jump into sports chemistry without first knowing the biochemistry of running. ACS Reactions and Darcy Gentleman of the ACS Office of Public Affairs runs through the science of why muscles burn, how sweat cools the body, and the chemistry of runner's high. Yep, that's me. You might be wondering how I ended up in this situation. So I'm training for a marathon. I'm 15 miles into this run. I have another seven to go. I'm losing steam. My legs are cramping. I can barely breathe. I don't know if I can make it another mile. What happened? You basically need three things to run a marathon, energy, oxygen, and water. Our bodies mainly use the sugar glucose for energy. We store it in big blobs called glycogen that can hold 30,000 glucose molecules. Building up glycogen is the basis for carbo-loading or carving up. That's when runners eat loads of carb-heavy meals, cramming as much glucose into their cells in the days before a race. Sounds like a great excuse to eat a bunch of pasta, but studies show it actually does work to increase your energy stores. Runners need oxygen too. First, you know, to live. But second, because it's key to using glucose efficiently. Our cells use oxygen in the reactions that break down glucose. Aerobic respiration, which relies on oxygen, is about 20 times more efficient than anaerobic respiration, which does not use oxygen. Aerobic activity, like distance running, cycling, cross-country skiing, has you breathing in a lot to keep going. Anaerobic activity is short and fast, like sprinting or weightlifting. Oxygen fuels our body's breakdown of glucose to water and carbon dioxide. Training increases the amount of oxygen your body takes in and your cell's ability to use it. All that makes for more efficient use of last night's pasta. When you start getting out of breath, your body is falling behind on the cleanup of waste products from burning all that fuel. That can lead to fatigue. As your aerobic respiration rates drop, your cells can only break glucose in half. That makes lactic acid. Now, it's a myth that lactic acid leads to muscle soreness, but the higher acidity inside your cells does disrupt biological processes. That's why your brain tells your legs they're on fire. 
it wants you to slow down and catch your breath. You can run low on glucose too. Runners like to say they bonked when they run out of glycogen. It tends to happen around mile 20, which is when many distance runners feel like they've hit the wall. When that happens, your cells start breaking down fatty acids to make more energy. Endurance athletes who have trained properly can break through the wall more smoothly and keep on trucking. Hitting the wall unprepared can be dangerous. Breaking down fatty acids form ketones, which can trip a process that drops your pH and causes dehydration. And this tires you out faster. And then there's water. One of water's most important functions is keeping you cool. When you sweat, liquid water on your skin evaporates, turning into water vapor. The energy that water molecules take into the gas phase comes from your body's heat. That's how sweating cools you off. It literally pulls heat away from your body. Some people may recognize a feeling of euphoria after a grueling workout, often called a runner's high. Recent research shows a connection between the euphoria and the brain's endocannabinoid system, the same one that responds to the active ingredient in pot. THC. Scientists have found high levels of a THC relative called anandamide in runner's blood after they work out. That leads to an increase of every brain's favorite molecule and the one that results in the high, dopamine. Some of us at Reactions really dig this distance running thing, others uh, not so much. Are you a runner or are you more of a couch-based athlete? People around the world spend more than a billion dollars on sports drinks annually. Name three ingredients you'll find in virtually all of these beverages. First, there's water, because you gotta stay hydrated. Item two, electrolytes such as sodium and potassium to replenish what you lose when you sweat. These electrolytes are essential for myriad biochemical processes. Drinking too much water without replacing these salts can actually dilute the blood and cause cells and tissue to swell. And lastly, there's sugar for an energy boost. Researchers are still working to find new ways to improve how that energy is delivered by working with different carbohydrates, including glucose polymers. It's time to make this event a little more interactive. Take the following three minutes to meet two people you don't already know. Introduce yourself using professional etiquette, so stand up straight and make eye contact while you're speaking. As you say hello, shake hands with a firm professional grip, share your full name, what you are majoring in and why, and then your favorite sport or sports team. Then let the other person introduce themselves. Remember, you only have three minutes, so be sure to be back in your seats before the buzzer sounds. Ready, set, go.
Welcome back. I hope everybody made new friends and professional contacts. Remember, the people sitting next to you could someday be your colleagues, so get to know them tonight.